G'day and welcome to RC Model Reviews. Today I'm looking at the RunCam HD version 2, or the RunCam 2 they call it. And basically, you get a whole lot of stuff. It's pretty good. Um, let's have a look at the camera first. There's the camera. Ta da Nothing really um, mind boggling there. If we compare it to the earlier versions of the RunCam, in terms of size, it is um, a fraction shorter. Looks like it's a fraction shorter to me. It's a fraction wider. You can see that just a little bit wider and it is also a fraction deeper so yeah overall the volume of this camera is greater than the volume of the old one now that's probably reasonable because this thing has wi-fi if you want to use wi-fi now <laughs> having said that i can't find any place to download the wi-fi app to use this so hmm, uh, that's probably coming probably coming but it does have some other benefits and features now what do we get obviously you're going to get your camera which is very important um, there's some mounting hardware, the little tray, it's got the little uh, uh, tripod screw if you want to stick it on a tripod. I don't know why you would, but if you want to, you can do that. Um, it's got a little GoPro type mount here, so you can use probably all the GoPro mounting and all those other action camera mountings simply by slotting this into here and connecting them up. Now that's great, but really for model use, yeah, we're probably gonna, not going to do that. You know, I mean, really all we want is this. Um, the mounting hardware, yeah. I've seen people use these cradles on their models, but they're a bit of a pain in the ass. The old one was. This is a bit better because notice here it's got a little um, finger you can move. The other one had a couple of prongs, I think, like the Mobius, and it was it's just a pain to get farting around with. So there you go. There's your camera now. When I first picked it up, I thought, hey, that's pretty damn light. But of course, it doesn't include the battery because the battery is removable. Yay, what a big thumbs up that is <laughs> because... Um, how many of us have had cameras and the batteries have gone dud and you've got to pull them apart and solder and fart around if you can find the right size battery. Having a separate battery, this is an 850 milliampere hour battery, that's a brilliant idea because you can buy spares. So if you're going to go out in the field with no way to charge this thing, charge up a few spares, take them with you and you can film all day long. That's a big bonus. That's a really good point. And, and because one thing I like is when cameras are designed for model use, I mean, you know, because there's so many things that you want to do on models that you don't need to do if you're going skiing or you're going on your boat or surfing or climbing a mountain or mountain biking. Our model flying requirements are somewhat different. So this says here that it is um, born, what is it? I have to put my glasses on. Oh man, I hate this getting old crap. It's just not really doing me any good. It says in here, born for RC fanatics. <laughs> I don't know why it says that. Um, I don't, is there any afterbirth on this? I don't think so. Um, but yeah, obviously they've designed it it's probably, you know, there's a lot of bits in here that aren't designed for model use, but it has been given an overall tilt towards using it on models, and that's great. That's really important. Now, having said that, what have we got here? We've got some holes in the side. That's going to be useful for letting some air in, because these things do run hot. They do a lot of processing, especially as this has got a 60 frames per second capability and 1440p, which really sort of stresses out the old processor a bit harder than the regular 1080p. Now it's got, I haven't actually, this is the first time I've played with it, it's got a lovely lens on the front. This is quite a bit different, it's got an um, anti-flare shroud on here which is removable. You can see you can just ping this out of the way, oh, I don't think I'll bother doing it, but you can ping it out of the way, fold it out of the way if you don't want it there. One LED by the look of it, multi-colour LED, power, mode, you know, these are the buttons we're used to. It's only two buttons, I think the old one had three from memory, it did look. The old one had three buttons, this has only got two buttons. Um, so that's something, I will find out later why that is. Um, so there's your basic camera, your battery, now you get some instructions, it's always incredibly handy to have instructions, and it, it, they're very simple to follow, they're multilingual, so if you'd prefer to read them in German or French, you can do that. I'm just going to run through quickly and just look at what it says here about the camera. Um, 120 degree field of view, that's quite good, so it's wide angle, it's got a, what have we got here, um, blah, 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 blah. Oh, hang on, 16 megapixels for the still camera, that's okay. The files are stored in MOV format, which is great. That's H.264 or 264 or whatever it is. It'll do NTSC and PAL live output. So the output that comes out of this lead here, you do get the lead. That lead will be NTSC or PAL. I'll be interested to see whether it records an NTSC or PAL because one of the bugbears I find as a video producer is that most of these little Mobius and action cameras, they produce 30 frames a second. But the camera that I'm recording this with does 25 frames a second. It's PAL. I live in a part of the world where we use the PAL standard. When I try and put footage that's 30 frames per seconds together with footage that's 25 frames a second, quality suffers. You either get stuttering or you get blurring. The, the, the pull down or pull up just doesn't work well enough on the video editing software to make it nice. So it'd be great if this did 25, 25 frames per second recording or 50 frames per second, but I don't think it does. It only says 60 and 30 in the book. Meh. Oh well. Never mind, I have to buy a more expensive video camera, I suppose, for my 
normal video use. Right, it's got micro USB, it can take up to a 64 gigabyte card, which is really handy, but honestly, you know, I find eight gigs uh, or 16 gigs is more than enough. And it's a nice price point when you're buying cards. Always get a class 10 or better card. Don't fart around with anything less than that because you'll end up with some problems. It has a G sensor, G sensor, which means that if you mount it this way on your model and you activate the G sensor, the picture will be upright. If you then tilt it up this way and put it on your model, then the, G, the picture will be upright. Downside of the G-Sensor is that it's not a locking G-Sensor, so it's constantly checking the G. So if you, if you flip over and fly inverted, then after one, two, what is it, one, two, three, or five seconds, the picture will flip. And I guess if you're flying FPV, that's going to be really difficult because you know, everything's going to look the right way up, but your controls will work backwards. So something to be aware of. Um, the G-Sensor can be useful, but sometimes it can actually be a real pain in the backside if you forget to turn it off when you don't want it. Now, it's got, um, it gives you the dimensions, battery capacity, blah, blah, blah. The USB power input will take from 5 to 17 volts. Ooh, no need to use a BEC. It'll take up to 17 volts, which in theory means a four cell pack. <laughs> and that would be through this power lead here, which is kind of like the GoPro ones you see. It has a power connector and a video connector. So if you want to use this as your live video camera, you can, but it will have latency. Won't matter on an AXN, but on a mini quad, you dream, and if you think you're going to be able to fly quickly with one of these as your primary video camera, it's just not going to happen because there's no HD camera I have ever seen which has low enough latency to give you that kind of performance for a mini quad. I want to show you something. Now, <laughs> I just a moment ago said that this camera would be no good for mini quads because of the latency, the high latency involved in these digital video recording cameras. Well, if you could see my face, you'll see we've got egg all over it at the moment, egg everywhere, because it's actually one of the, it's just really low latency. And this goes to prove that when you're reviewing stuff, never, never assume anything. <laughs> this has just been rammed back home to me by this. Never assume anything, check everything. So that's why I've put this a little bit in here, which I recorded later. But I want you to see now, I'm going to turn on the camera, and I've got the live video connection on going on here. And... Bingo, run cam. Yes, there it is. And I want you to watch the latency here. Look, look, see my finger. Look, look how closely my finger. Oops, try the other side so you can actually get a view of what's going on here. Look how closely the finger on the on the screen matches my finger movement here. There, that's incredibly good. Usually there's like a half a second delay on some of these cameras, but this is very good. I'd say looking at this just like this, there's probably about mm, 80 or 90 milliseconds of latency, not even that, that's really good, that's better than the FEOV actually, <laughs> and that's a, it's not a digital camera, I'm really impressed with that, that is fantastic, it just goes to show that you shouldn't make assumptions, so this is the best ever live video output I've seen from a recording cam in terms of latency, now what I do notice here is the colours look pretty crap, look my fingers have got jaundice, that's, that's terrible, I mean that, you know the colour, I'm going to have a play around with the menus now, and I'm going to do a separate video showing you how the menu system works. Uh, so that'll be coming up shortly if you want to see it. See if I can get rid of this horrible jaundice. But apparently, according to this, it weighs 49 grams, which isn't too bad at all. It doesn't say whether that's with the battery or not, but we'll check that with the scales later. Okay, it's got Wi-Fi, as I said, but no Wi-Fi app that I can find. Um, what else does... Oh, one thing that's really good, it has an on-screen display. Now, in the older run cams, like this one, you had to load some software up on your PC and take your memory card and dump file on it, put it in here and fart around. It was really quite a pain in the backside to change any of the settings. That's where the Mobius, oops, well I can find it. That's where the Mobius was a real winner because you just plug the USB connector in there, plug it into your PC and you can set everything up without farting around with making little files and things. This was never so good. And so this is a giant step forward because now you can change your settings in the field. If you've got this wired up as a live video feed, or if you've got a Wi-Fi um, device like your phone and you've got the app when they release it. So that's great, you can change the video resolution, the number of frames per second, all those things that you always want to do and you can never could do easily with this thing in the field. Brilliant, excellent, giant step forward. You get the normal micro USB to USB for charging and for dumping files or if you can't bother taking the card out because the card itself, if I'm not mistaken, if I can get the catch open, how the hell does this work? Yeah. It shows an arrow, but uh, what does it say? Micro SD. Uh, uh, there we go. The, once you take that out, the micro SD card goes in, let me zoom in a bit, goes in here. And the battery obviously slides in that other big hole there. So that little cover covers it up. So in some respects, it's going to be a snot load easier if you want to avoid taking this little cover off and on to simply plug in with the USB lead 
and just plug it into your computer? Don't know. You'll decide that. See how you get on. There you go. Comes with some nice orange straps. Look at that lovely orange straps with Run Cam printed on them for those people who want to have a branded strap. Now that's quite cool because we all know that you're taping these on a mini quad or something to a Mobius platform and you've got to get your own Velcro or something and they come off so easily. Um, downside would be that the camera itself is made of slippy slidey plastic. So if you put this on here and you do that strap up, nothing to stop it from sliding off, right? Yeah, shame, shame. The Mobius on the other hand, if I can find my Mobius, here's a Mobius. If I was to use the strap on my Mobius in the same way, shape and fashion, I have a feeling that once I tighten it up, it's much harder to move on the Mobius. So it's a shame this doesn't have the kind of this rubberized texture that this has got because that would make these straps far more useful because as you'll see on my, my own Mobius, what I've done is I've put some Velcro in here so that the straps actually grip to that Velcro and it doesn't slide off. So yeah, they've, gone, they've done a lot of good things, but there's still things they could improve. Nothing's perfect, is it? Not even me. <laughs> uh, hang on, I'll get the instructions out again because I'm going through these step by step. What have we got? Um, yeah, it's got blah, 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 blah. You can change a whole lot of stuff, the, the light metering mode and things like that, which is quite useful if, you get it, if you're working on a you know, bright day or a dull day. You might want to pop those around a bit. And what did I see here, well, which I really meant to mention? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Um, oh, now I've forgotten. I hate that. I hate that when you forget stuff. Never mind. Oh, yeah. It's got digital image stabilization. Now, that is a giant first. Um, none of these other cameras have had image stabilization. And that means that if you've got to, you know, if you're trying to use this in your hand walking around, everything's all wobbly and shaky and things, put on the image stabilization and it will stabilize the picture. Now, is that going to be useful in a model flying situation? I have my doubts actually because stabilization sometimes actually makes the picture worse. When you've got a smooth pan, for example, quite often stabilization will introduce jerking because the the camera's image stabilization sees the pan as, a, as a, something that has to be fought. So you'll get it, it'll work to the limits of the stabilization, then it'll jump, and then it'll work to the limits and jump. So instead of getting that nice smooth pan, you get a jittery pan. I'll be checking for that. We'll be doing some flights with the stabilization on and the stabilization off to see how much difference that makes. So, yep, that's really about it. Now, it's got some screws holding it all together. What do you say we take it apart? Yeah? Okay. Okay, the screws are out. Let's see if we can get the lid off this thing. Oh, it doesn't want to come. Let's undo the battery. Slide, unslide the battery. Catch. Ah, maybe there's something lurking in there. You always got to check on these things. Quite often they have little things that catch you out. Hmm. Might have some little catches as well. I got all the screws. Yes, all the screws are out, including the two up the front here that hold the lens bit together. So. Oh, yep, it's starting. It's starting to come. Here we go. This is the top up here. Let's take, let's remove this thing because we don't need that. And ooh, there's something holding it in. It doesn't want to go. It doesn't want to go. What's the what's the hold up here? It'd be lovely if I broke it before I even used it, wouldn't it? Oh, here we go. It's falling apart. It's all busted now. There you go. <laughs> Whoa, just dropped it. There you go. So here we go. Hopefully the camera will focus on this. That's the goodness inside, and it's quite different construction to your average. Action camera, look at it, we've got a little shielded board here. You can see on the other side there's a components load loaded on there. We've got a main board down here with another big shield on it. We've got another board here, and they're all shielded, which is really good news. The inside of the camera isn't shielded. See that? Now the, the other run cam had a copper flash. You notice I saw that copper flash, I thought that was really good. This does not have the copper flash. Does that mean it's going to be a noisy camera on UHF? I don't know, because we do have a lot of RF shielding in the cans in here. There's our image sensor, which flops around a bit. Mm, there we go. Um, yeah, so there's not probably a lot to see in here. Uh, I could probably prize the guts of it out, but we're not going to see a hell of a lot. Most of it's hidden underneath. Um, yep, and there's the battery contacts here. And when you slide the battery in, they just line up with that. So yeah, I mean, there's a bit there, but it's not really exciting. The biggest thing that we've noticed is the lack of any shielding on the case itself. So let's put it back together and see if it makes a noise. Yep, so there you go, got it back together, didn't bust anything, I don't think. Um, pretty easy to pull apart, put together. One thing worth noting is that that mother-daughter board situation there, it could be a little bit more prone to damage in a high impact crash, so uh, we'll see how robust this thing is. Okay, I'm going to put the film in it now. Here's the film. Ta -da. I always use a reasonable quality card. Don't buy cheap Ning Tong Nidalai Po cards because sometimes they're really crap and sometimes they're not even the, the size that they say on the label. So get yourself a decent card. Samsung, um, these, these um, 
strontium things. I think they're Kodak, are they? Is it Kodak? No, just looks like it's got the same colours as Kodak. <laughs> How about that? That's a bit of a cheat, isn't it? Yeah, I thought it was Kodak, but it's not. It's just a Ying Tong Yud Lai Tai. No, oh, never mind, we'll find out if it works. Um, what always annoys me is they don't show you which way up the cards go, do they? I mean, it's not really... Mm, you can tell by looking because the metal shield, metal shield itself um, is the top. So if I push that in there, ta-da, done. Done like a dog's dinner. Now there's my battery. Battery goes this way. You can tell it by looking inside at the, at the connections. Battery will just slide in there and it should. Yeah, it's good. It does have a, a little push. I've noticed cameras where there's absolutely, you can't feel the contacts making contact and that's really bad news if you're going to use them in a situation with vibration or shock loads and things like that because they will malfunction. Your camera will reboot. So here we go. Put the cover back on if I can get it on. I think this little piece of plastic here, this little, oh, sorry I'm out of shot, this piece of plastic here is buggering things up because it gets caught in the mechanism. Oh man, never mind, let's try it again. There we go, done. She's all ready to go. So in theory, if I push this button here, the light should come on. Or maybe I have to charge it first. <laughs> There's nothing happening. Go gadget, go. No, it's dead. Oh, no, it made a noise. There you go, look at that. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. You have to hold it down for a long time. I hate these cameras, like the worst camera in the entire world. I can find it because it's supposed to be sitting around here somewhere. Excuse me, here we go. Worst camera in the entire world is this, the bloody Xiaomi. I mean, everyone says, oh, they're so good. But man, you bump the bloody power lead, bump the power switch, and they come on. Well, it didn't that time, probably because the battery's flat. Yeah, I think the battery's flat because it's been knocked on so many times. It doesn't stop. I have to recharge it. But these things, the power thing is so sensitive that I always get out of my bag, oh, it's been bumped and it's on. Oh, crap. This is a much better idea. You have to hold that power button on to turn it on. Love that. And it's also recessed, so you're not going to bump it anyway. That's good. Love that a great deal. So let's put the spectrum analyzer on the bench, see how much noise this little thing makes. Right, oh, here we go. I've got the spectrum analyzer set up. We've got a center frequency of 438 megahertz here, which is right in the middle there. And what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to turn on a Mobius because, yeah, that's the benchmark. Let's have a look. I'll put the Mobius right here and I will turn it on and you can see what happens. Woo, look. A bit of action there and the Mobius is on. Notice there was quite a rise in the noise floor. The noise floor came up quite a bit. We're currently hovering around minus 95. Let's turn that Mobius off and see where it goes. Oh, drops down to minus 104. So about nearly 10 decibel increase in the noise floor. That's a lot. That's 10 times. That's a lot of increase in the noise floor. At, at close range, of course, but that gives you a baseline. That's our baseline. Right, let's get our original run cam and see what that does. Turning it on. It's on now. Ching, ching. Whoop, there we go. And it just happens that we're sitting right on a noise peak there. That also goes down to 92, 94 decibels. So, yeah, quite a significant increase in the noise there as well. Let's turn that off and you'll see the noise floor will fall away. With luck. I hold the button down long enough? No, I didn't. Hold it down longer and ka -ching, noise floor falls away. So here we go. Time for the new Runcam 2 HD. Let's put that in place. You'll be able to hear a little beep when it turns on. Here you go. That's on. And that's a lot less noise. They've done a really good job. What have we got here? We've got minus 101, minus 100 decibels. So that is a fraction of the noise that the older run cam has and certainly a fraction that the Mobius has so woo that's pretty damn good I'm kind of impressed with that they've done a good job with that let's turn it off and see what happens yeah there's a drop but not much not much compared to what we got from the other cameras that's really really good so this little camera here if you're flying UHF that's a Jim Dandy that's probably the best one I've reviewed so far in terms of UHF noise output Bloody brilliant. I've also checked it on 2.4. There's nothing on 2.4. Didn't expect there to be anything on 2.4 at all. Uh, it's simply too high. So there you go. Now it's time to see whether the brochure lied. How much does this weigh? Let's have a look here. The run cam, and it's got the battery in it now, ready to go. Ta -da, 49, ooh, 50 grams. We'll give them the extra gram. They said 49, these scales say 50. And uh, these have been atomically calibrated by putting lumps of paper on them. No, they haven't. They're just a regular set of scales. So 50 grams, that's not too bad. Just a reminder, the old run cam with a little bit of Velcro on it was 44. So it is heavier than the old, and also lens cap. I might mention this doesn't have a lens cap. Just relies on that shroud to protect the lens. That may be a good thing, maybe a bad thing. Generally, I don't bother too much with the lens caps. And of course, if you're looking at the Mobius, that's 
45, 47. So, hey, there's really nothing in it. It's also damn close. And I guess we should check out the Foxia as well, because that is a camera de jour. How much does that damn thing weigh? Hang on, take it out of the box. I did do part one of a review on the Foxia, and we saw how much it weighed, but I've forgotten. So, I'll take it out. I'll take out the new orange one. Look at this. Oh, here we go. Orange one, 51. So, it's a gram heavier. No, no yes, it is. Yes, no, it's not. And so, yes, it is. No, it's not. <laughs> anyway, so it's so close it doesn't matter. Very, very similar. There you go. Um, and for those that want to see the comparison, I'll do a shootout between these two cameras anyway, but I mean, that's the difference. You can see the Fox is you know, a bit longer. It's about the same width and a little bit squatter. So I'll be doing a complete shootout between these two cameras because these are probably the two leading cameras on the market right now for HD FP or HD onboard video because they both do 60 frames a second, there's pros and cons to which I'll tell you which one I think is better. But it really depends on what you're going to be doing. So watch for the Foxia Orange review coming up very shortly, and the comparison, the shootout between the two. You can compare video side to side, you can compare the feature list side to side. But that's about it for the first part of the Runcam HD version 2. So far, I am quite impressed with what I've seen. I really have to say um, that looking at it from a mechanical point of view, it has some, you know, Will it be strong enough with those daughter boards? You know, if we, yeah, if we have a big crash, will it survive? I don't know. We will find out undoubtedly because you all know how I fly. Um, it's bigger, it's bulkier, it's much quieter on UHF. It's, I like the way the power button's organized. I like the fact that it has an OSD so you can change and Wi-Fi, you can change the settings at the field to suit whatever you're doing. The optics apparently are really, really good, so we'll test those out. Um, all in all, it looks like they've been listening and they've done some really cool stuff. So. Let's wait for part two for my final decision. Thanks for watching. If you've got questions, comments, stick them in the usual place. I'll do my best to answer them. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and I will now get back to the bench. Bye for now. And here, just to give you an idea of light handling and a little bit about the image quality, colours and so forth, I'm just here at the airfield, going to do a bit of a pan around. Don't have the image stabilisation on, so this is all handheld. And hopefully, if I go from the bright cloud down to the ground, you'll be able to see how the light handling works. Now this is very preliminary, there should be a lot of wind noise on this because I have the uh, microphone exposed at the front, well it is exposed at the front through a little hole, and you tend to get a lot of noise with that, so there you go. That is the Runcam 2 HD, just a very very early preliminary video, but stay tuned, plenty of flying videos coming up, and a lot of people want to see how this performs when we put on a mini quad and get a lot of action because see how well the compression works, see how much pixelation we might get. There you go. That's enough for now.